Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Frans Vos. I am Associate Professor with uh, Delft University of Technology. And also, uh, I have a similar position at uh, the Academic Medical Center um, in Amsterdam, the Department of Radiology. So my group is working in Delft on fundamental techniques for uh, medical image analysis, and we try to apply that in practice in the AMC. So I have a kind of bridge function between the two groups. Um, perhaps you have uh, have seen this uh, movie. It's rather old, but it's still very, it's, it's great. Um, there's this uh, gorgeous, still young Rachel Welch starring in it. And you have these uh, very nice images from, from inside the blood vessels. And I use this picture often as an introduction when I still worked into virtual colonoscopy because it served as a major source of inspiration working of, for people working in that field. And we, when we started our work for FIGOR on Crohn's disease, we also had a vision of something like this, uh, like, like you know, showing the disease from inside the bowel. Now, in, eventually, it became something entirely different, and that is what this talk is going to be about. Now, um, this is an introduction that uh, has been given before by me. Um, I hope that you know a bit by, oh, about Crohn's disease. It's inflammatory bowel disease, widely prevalent and mostly affecting the terminal ileum. Um, the project targets not so much diagnosis but really grading of the disease, how severe it is. And for that, the reference standard typically is uh, colonoscopy in combination with histopathology. And one of the scores that is often used is this is Crohn's disease endoscopic index of, active, of severity, the CDEIS, and that's the score to which we have compared ourselves often. I must admit that there are other scores to assess Crohn's disease, as reviewers have pointed out to us in our papers, but we have stuck to, to the CDEIS scores. Now, there's a problem with the CD, with the colonoscopy, and that is, well, they're a bit they're not really objective. It's a gastroenterologist making an assessment, and the one gastroenterologist does it in one way, and another does it in his own way. More importantly, um, it has its limitations in the sense that you cannot see through the bowel wall, of course. You cannot see disease aspects that are further than, than, than superficially. Also, maybe the most important aspect is that colonoscopy is of course invasive and it's not something that that um, patients want. Now we thought at the outset of the project that we could make progress beyond the state of the art um, and that was um, facilitated by new MRI imaging techniques at the time and we thought that well radiologists could recognize um, wall thickening in those images and um, they had also already recognized that if you give a contrast medium, then the diseased um, tissue uh, shows up very much. It lightens up. And these, these kinds of features are combined also in um, MRI indices of disease severity. For instance, in the Crohn's disease activity score and the magnetic resonance index of um, uh, activity, the Mariah score, these are often quoted in, in the literature. Now then again, there are limitations also of the, of the MRI um, assessment. Um, and one is that there is no consensus, at, at least it seems to me as a technologist, between radiolo radiologists and on what kinds of features uh, to use. And indicative for that is that one of our radiologists is very fond of the T2-haste image. And another radiologist in, in our team is very fond of the post-conscious vibe image. Um, so so it, 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 and this has to do, I believe, um, by the fact that there's so much correlation between all these features that are seen in the MRI images. Now we've seen that there's substantial inter-observer variation. One of our radiologists was very um, meticulous in, in his assessment and another was, was much more quicker. And, and uh, we saw that there was, because of that, also variable correlation to the CDEIS score. There are also there are other reasons for that, but, but I believe that this is one of the reasons. Uh, the uh, inter-observer variability. Um, we have also seen that th the radiologists are very well able to, to distinguish severe disease and they're also able to, 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 to um, 
um, recognize remis remission, so, so hardly any disease. But in between, there, is hardly any, there are hardly any points on the scale. They're not ver very able to recognize mild disease. So the objective that the project had is, is the following. Well, we wanted to have improved, to, to enable improved automated assessment of Crohn's disease. And we wanted to do that by relating all the information that, are, that is available on patients. So the laboratory MRI, colonoscopy, and microscopy data. As a matter of fact, we wanted to predict features from the colonoscopy, so the CDEIS, from properties seen on the MRI images. So in fact, we wanted to produce a quantitative objective index of severity, a new disease severity index, so to speak. So what have we done, actually? Um, well, we have acquired an enormous database. Uh, when we started out, we had uh, only a, res a retrospective data, data acquired in the past, and that was very well to develop our techniques. Um, and in the meantime, we were prospectively acquiring new data that fulfilled all the requirements that we had. Um, we had MRI data from 30 patients in the retrospective data set and 111 patients in a prospective uh, set. And each um, MRI set was evaluated by four, respectively, two radiologists. Um, furthermore, um, there were annotations made in those um, images where exactly there was disease activity seen. So we, we indicated polygons around regions where there was uh, disease um, activity visible. The radiologists, by the way, assess all kinds of features, like if there was wall thickening, enhancement on the T2 images, uh, all the aspects that are commonly assessed by radiologists. And then we had colonoscopy data um, of each patient. And um, in the colonoscopy data, we, we assess the CDEIS in the retrospective data by one gastroenterologist and in the prospective data by two readers, two gastroenterologists. One of the first things we looked into was um, the inter-observer variability of uh, MRI features. This was clinical research. Um, and we saw that the reproducibility of individual MRI features is overall fair to good. There were features that didn't reproduce uh, very well, and there were others that reproduced uh, very good. An example of good reprodu uh, reproduction is the multi-rater kappa. It's an, a measure of the inter-observer variability. And we saw that the CDA score and the Mariah score uh, reproduced quite nicely um, among our four uh, readers. On, we had a couple, a couple of around uh, 0.8, you could, could say. So the inter-observer variability of, of these uh, Maria and CDA score, scores weren't so bad. Um, however, if you correlated them to CDEIS, we had only moderate agreement on the order of 0 0.5. So one of the first things that we worked on technically was we developed techniques for automatically, or semi-automatically actually, um, delineating regions of interest. And the way it worked was like this. We let an expert um, indicate coarsely um, the center line in the bowel near where there was a potential lesion due to Crohn's disease. And then we first um, delineated the inner bowel surface and then the outer bowel surface and that gave us a region of interest where potentially there was disease activity. Um, this uh, sounds uh, simple but in fact it's very difficult. The problem here is that the MRI images do not have a homogeneous signal. Uh, on the one side um, uh, of the image, the signal in the bowel wall may be lower than on the other side of the image, and the image processing techniques have to take care of that. Um, another problem that we had to cope with is that the bowel content is not homogeneous. It's not only water or air, is, as in virtual colonoscopy. It's a combination of all sorts of materials. Um, now, this small movie I will go into um, uh, later on, but it's an indication that, that we have uh, very clever techniques that work quite nicely in deline delineating a region of interest. Um, the next step was to measure certain features on that region of interest. And, um, 
well, we develop techniques to do that. Um, we, for instance, we, we had measures to, to, to automatically derive the maximal wall thickness from our region of interest and the, the mean wall thickness and other th thickness related features. And we found that they correlated um, to some extent to the CDEIS. At least they gave a better correlation than the manual measurements of wall thickness. You can see that the technique works well in the sense that there is very good correlation between our automated and our manual measurements. Um, the sec so now we have one feature of our region of interest, that's the wall thickness. And the next feature that we wanted to derive is the relative contrast enhancement because it's so often quoted as um, related to Crohn's disease activity. So we created a registration technique to have correspondence between the post-contrast image in which we delineated our region of interest and images acquired during a contrast injection. Um, if you zoom into this image, you get the region that is shown in the third image. And if you zoom in into the, the, the more or less corresponding region in the DCE image, you get the, the, region, the image that is shown on the right. In the third image, you, you see in green a healthy region that was annotated uh, manually. And in red, there is a region that, was that, that came out of our uh, algorithm. When you project those regions directly over the DCE image, you see that there is no correspondence. You see that the green part, for instance, doesn't coincide with the bowel wall. It's off. When you do a regular registration, it doesn't help much. This region still seems to be off. So we de de devise technique to really have a good correspondence of our DCE images and um, the post-contrast image in which there was a region of interest in which we were over which we wanted to measure features. So we derived this, this measure of, this, uh, of relative contrast enhancement from the uh, DCE series. And we correlated that to the CDERS. And you see that the correlation that we found of our automatic measure is, is larger than when you let observers measure relative contrast enhancement. I must admit here that, that, that observers usually um, measure relative contrast enhancement in, Im in images prior to this DCE se series as well as after the DCE series. So the measure is not entirely comparable. So now we have two features. We have a region of interest and we have two features. Relative contrast enhancement and um, wall thickness automatically determined. And now we want, of course, to relate those features to CDEIS. Um, what we first did is we let the radiologist annotate all kinds of features that he saw in, in the images. And um, of all these features, we tried all combinations. So in, in effect, we did an exhaustive search over all kinds of combinations of features and correlated that combination to the CDEIS. And then you get, of course, a sort of median correlation for each model. And we rank them from the highest correlation to the lowest correlation. Now, the highest correlation is about six, 0 0.65 in this, uh, in this graph. And um, there's a whole set of models that are actually not significantly different. If you look into the... Uh, into the features that are used in those non-significantly different models, you see that oops, you see that that some um, aspects occur more often than other aspects. So you see that the RCE doesn't occur in these models very often. It's it's other features that seem to be more important. Now, if you take the top five of these manually annotated features, oops, Sorry, wrong button. Um, if you take the top five of these features and you correlate that in an independent uh, set to the CDEIS, you get this, this correlation that you see here, 0.6 uh, something. 
um, that is better than when you, you correlate the CDA to, uh, to the CDEIS in that independent set. And you also get a higher correlation than when you, you, you correlate the Mariah to the CDEIS. Now when you add first this automatic uh, contrast enhancement feature, you see that, and you add that to the manual features, you see that the correlation goes up. And when you add wall thickness, it goes up even further. So that is an indication that doing automatic measurements helps in the correlation. We have other proofs that it does help, but these are some, um, well, um, some of the crucial um, examples. Um, I guess that uh, Joachim will go into, into our results of classification more deeper. Now then we made new visualization techniques to visualize what is visible in those images. Um, and in virtual colonoscopy there are these techniques to, to unfold the, uh, the surface of the, bowel, of the bowel wall and have a more intuitive uh, look at them. And they seem to work for some people and we tried that also on our um, data. The thing with our data is that you're not so much interested in the surface but what is behind the surface. So for that we are working on volumetric unfolding techniques to not only unfold the surface of the bowel wall but actually unfold the entire bowel wall volume without introducing too many distortions. Um, all this technical work has been integrated in a platform that is um, clinically useful. You see, what the technol technological people do in our project is really prototyping in an environment that is not usable for any, you know, practical problem. And that was given by this uh, environment um, um, marketed by Biotronics 3D. Um, what we also did is we did a, a preliminary study into the effect of therapy. So we le looked into our uh, retrospective uh, patients and looked into those patients that were um, imaged twice over time. And what we did then is we looked into whether the MRI features changed if the, um, if the um, severity of the disease clinically observed also changed. And what we found is that there's a relation between those aspects, as you would expect. There's reduced inflammatory activity seen on MRI if the patients also responded well uh, clinically to their therapy. The bottom line of, uh, of my talk is that we have developed uh, all kinds of techniques to automatically d derive features, or semi-automatically I must admit, um, uh, derive features um, from our MRI images that show nice correlation to the CDEIS. What is work in progress is um, validating our techniques on the prospectively acquired data. We have developed everything on retrospective data and are now testing our tools on the prospective data um, and uh, much of the results on that will be shown in the posters. I think that on average all the results comprise 50 or so prospectively acquired patients. So um, over the last year the project has taken uh, major steps. Um, still there is work to do. One thing is of course the prospective data analysis as I already mentioned. Um, what we also want to do is we want to derive really quantitative features on the perfusion instead of a sort of qualitative feature that we derive now. Um, what we also intend to do now is we want to do a follow-up study. So figure doesn't end here, it, it, it keeps on going with other pro in other projects. Uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to um, ask figure patients to come back and assess changes in the Crohn's disease activity over time. Uh, perhaps we want to make a sub-analysis on treatment. Um, I guess that we will not have uh, sufficient patients for that, but that would be really nice. Um, so the idea here is that we want to call back patients from the figure study six to 36 months after the first 
um, examinations and we want to reach up to 24 fu full inclusions. And the idea is then to relate features measured in the MRI images to features observed clinically. Now, um, that was all that I had to, to say. Um, I guess that uh, it is now up to Harry to show um, how some of our tools work in, uh, in practice. Thank you very much.